A very warm welcome to the 47th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is well and enjoying their weekend. This was the scene from a balcony in Mumbai on the west coast of India. The monsoon, the largest sea breeze on the planet, of course, uh, has now arrived in parts of uh, Mumbai as well as Delhi up in the far north of the country. So we, of course, are continuing to see the northward progress, a kind of stumbly northward progress of the 2023 monsoon season, of course, all thanks to strong land heating versus um, a relatively cool Indian Ocean that drives southwesterly winds and rain burn clouds northwards. And it can be a slow process, but the fact that we've got El Nino in place, it isn't uh, suppressing the monsoon season so far. It was a bit of a delay, but uh, it isn't suppressing the monsoon season as El Ninos traditionally do because it's only starting now. And indeed, we've also got warm waters over the Indian Ocean, which enhances the monsoon season in fairly simplistic terms. So a lot of things to get through, of course, as per usual. Please like, share, and indeed subscribe if you haven't already done so. I do greatly appreciate that. This is the month to date, two meter temperature anomalies here off weatherbell.com. And we do have uh, plenty of areas of warm and cool. Uh, we do have uh, a warmer than average Australia overall. Western portions of Australia is below average, actually. Uh, we have got uh, the equatorial Africa below average, some of northwestern Africa slightly below average, despite the temperatures heating up now. And indeed, south and southwestern fringes of the continent is below average. Northwest India, helped by Bipper Joy a week or so ago, that had brought some rains, not necessarily directly associated with the monsoon, but of course, tropical development over the Arabian Sea. It has been Persian rains in the parts of Pakistan, northwest India, while further south and east uh, temperatures have been 45 to 47 Celsius in recent times. Warmer than average across uh, eastern Australia, like I say, we've got a warmer than average Kazakhstan and Mongolia, south southern portions of, uh, of Russia, below average across western Russia, warmer than average across Europe. We could be on target for the warmest June on record for the UK, or at least within the top five. Just depends on the final week or so of June, uh, how those figures mount up. Alaska below average, uh, southwestern and eastern United States below average. And indeed, we've got a below average Greenland as well. Greenland doing not too bad at all. But of course, we don't hear that in the mainstream media that the Greenland uh, surface mass budget is well above average for the time of the year. It is snowing here. It is cold here. But of course, like I said, we don't typically hear much about that. Global sea surface temperature normally is, of course, a lot of hype, a lot of scaremongering about uh, how warm temperatures have been surrounding the British Isles. I've explained already. I did see one comment saying that the atmosphere doesn't uh, warm the oceans. That is complete rubbish, if I'm being honest with you. Short-term influences uh, um, you know, from atmosphere to at least the top skin temperature of the ocean does be affected, but on long-term uh, basis, not so much. But certainly, the atmosphere has definitely been allowing a warming over the North Atlantic and indeed the sub and tropical Atlantic uh, I've already explained this, why that's the case. High pressure further north compared to average over a long period of time. We had about four weeks with that high, barely budged. Lack of weather, strong income and solar radiation, allowing those temperatures to warm to late August, early September levels. Further south, where you would typically have the subtropical high, that has been non-existent. So therefore, we don't have those easterly winds doing two things. Upwell in the waters, from the Canaries down to the Cape Verde and into the central tropical Atlantic. That typically uh, occurs during the early portion of the, the season, hence why we don't typically see an African wave train developing until the second half of the hurricane season. It's usually Caribbean and in cl close to the United States development at this time of the year, but very unusual to see systems developing on board an African easterly wave during the month of June. But those water temperatures not disturbed the way they normally would, and we haven't seen half as much African dust getting blown off the Sahara as well. That typically filters the sun 
and means we don't see the same warming of the sea surface temperature. We will start, I think we will start to see a removal of some of these four, five, six Celsius above average surrounding the British Isles in the coming uh, week, two weeks or so, because we are going to see lower pressure now and are seeing lower pressure now involved in the pattern. The very areas that high pressure have been so dominant, we've got low pressure, we're seeing wind increase, so we will start to upwell the waters around this area off the northwest coast of both Ireland and the UK in the coming days. And you can see here off this chart, this is the, the peak wind gust off the GFS model. And you can see here the uh, the wind now starting to increase uh, off the U the UK and, and Irish coastline here with areas of low pressure coming in. And further south, this is the subtropical high here down in the more traditional region between the Azores and Bermuda, of course. And, of course, surrounding this area of high pressure is those trade winds blowing not only off uh, Spain and Portugal, but off Africa also out over the Atlantic. So this is kind of almost like business resumes as normal. Notice here this little wind swath here is sweeping up towards uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. That indeed is Tropical Storm Cindy, which is expected to lift northwards in the coming days here. And that may even have a slight in increase in deepening the trough over the Northeast Atlantic as we press into the month of June. We'll wait and see exactly what happens. Like I said, our friend David Birch down in Walsall uh, put out this interesting tweet. Greenland surface mass budget off the chart, yet uh, media feel uh, falls silent, of course, and uh, no surprise there that we are seeing that the uh, surface mass budget of Greenland uh, well above average uh, for this time of the year, which is always interesting to see. I always like to see um a little bit of um a little bit of perspective, if you will, because there is so much hype at the moment with regards to climate change. It is quite suffocating at this moment in time. The noise that's been created by mainstream media, social media, and whatnot. This is the last seven days, by the way, um, across the world uh, in terms of 2 meter temperature anomalies. Really heating things up over Central and Southeastern Europe, by the way. Of course, we've had that shift in the upper pattern. Low pressure now to the northwest, high pressure to the southeast. We're starting to really heat things up. We've seen record-breaking temperatures in parts of Central Europe. Of course, it's been so cool and wet um, you know, during the springtime. That, of course, is silenced. And then, of course, when you're talking about record-breaking temperatures, then we start to hear about it, of course. Uh, cool compared to average of the last seven days across Greenland here. Chile compared to average across the western portion of the United States. Also, the eastern and southeastern United States. Cooking across Texas. Mexico, very dry compared to average. And we're seeing temperatures pushing the 50 Celsius mark. Southern Australia, below average compared to uh, the north. Uh you know, still drier than average conditions across Indonesia, up into southeastern mainland Asia, which uh, has been very, very hot compared to average. The last seven days, by the way, most of Africa below average. But look at this here, western Kazakhstan into central and western Europe, uh, Russia, sorry, very, very cold compared to average here. Again, we don't hear an awful lot about it. So the return of the westerlies after such very stagnant, stable, blocky, Weather that you know that high has just subtly shifted from northwest to northeast. Then the temperatures, humidity has shoved through the roof. Of course, we are going to see a decrease in temperatures after potentially seeing the hottest day of the year so far in the southeast today. If we get above 32.2, it'll be the warmest day of 2023 for the British Isles. We have a pretty decent chance of getting there. We do have a frontal system. Moving from west to east at the moment here, that southeast corner staying relatively uh, sunny, quiet, and even right the way through to uh, the 5th of July. You can see here plenty of wet weather uh, across particularly western areas. So it shows you that the systems are coming in off the Atlantic, of course. So Western Ireland, Wales, England, and Scotland are going to see plenty of rain over the next uh, 10 days or so here southeastern portions of the country a lot less even wet across central portions of europe as well so that's uh, always quite interesting to see uh, we are going to see temperatures in the low 40s in the next few days here at 50 temperatures are pretty warm 
down across southern Spain and Portugal. So we've got a chance for the next few days before temperatures start to come down during next week. We do have a chance of seeing 42, 43 Celsius across southern portions of Iberia. Nothing really that out of the ordinary for the time of the year, but we could in fact actually approach a June record here, by the way. So I suppose it is a little bit on the hot side for uh, late June, of course. Um, but you can see here as we skip through the, the model here that off the GFS, uh, we do start to cool things down a little bit across, say, uh, particularly the northern half of uh, Iberia. Looking at the um, extremes that have been taking place around the world in the last several days here, of course, uh, we did have a very chilly start of the month of June um, over the northeastern half of the United States. Bill Cairns here, a reminder that the weather in your back, uh, backyard means very little when it comes to the global average temperatures. The coolest start of June on record for a few spots in the northeast United States. At the same time, this is the warmest start of June ever recorded globally. Quite an interesting tweet there by Bill Cairns. Lack of wind, of course, a big contributing factor to the warmth over the Atlantic, over the Baltic Sea, and over western portions of the Mediterranean Basin, of course. And then we have got, this is a, a tweet here by Disaster News, a, a heavy hailstorm in Mercia, southeastern Spain, during the course of the week. Um, so that's quite interesting. Interesting tweet here by Tom, Tom Saunders here, based in, I think, Sydney, Australia. What happened to Australia's dry winter positive IOD has not developed, and winter storm track has shifted well north. The result is a, a week long soaking ahead and already the wettest start to winter in decades for parts of the Murray Basin. That's quite interesting, isn't it? But we have had a bit of a slug, sluggish kind of slowdown in the El Nino development. The Man Julian oscillation over the western portion of the Pacific, kind of keeping the easterly trades blowing a little bit stronger. Therefore, we don't see the same gathering of warm water over the eastern equatorial Pacific compared to what you would typically see during the beginning of an El Nino season. This was a temperature recorded at Rio Grande Village in Texas, 119 degrees Fahrenheit, very close to the uh, an all-time June record, by the way, only a one degree off it. And uh, this was some very impressive heat across parts of Texas, and like I say, even high elevations in Mexico, well into the into the 40s. Uh, Aknagar, by the way, in the West Highlands didn't drop below 20.1 Celsius last night, so a very, very toasty night, especially for early portions of the summer in parts of Scotland and across most of the UK. It was a very mild night, of course. Uh, interest tweet here by um, weatherman um, Aditya. A rarest of rare occasions as, as both Mumbai and Delhi uh, on took the onset on the same day of the, the monsoon. So the monsoon arrived on the same day in both Mumbai and Delhi. The last four days, monsoon has covered more than 50% of the country thanks to an active trough and uh, cycling activity over the Bay of Bengal. And we will see more coverage over Gujarat, Raj Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab in the next two to three days. We're going to continue to see these heavy rains moving north by the way see up across uh, the far the foothills of the of the himalayas uh cherapunji of course and this region is the wettest part of the world uh on average and we have seen recent days well over a thousand millimeters of rain falling within two to three days in the the himalayan foothills of northeast india so uh, very interesting stuff this was a scene from Rajasthan back on the 18th of June. Massive floodwaters developing here thanks to the Indian monsoon. New world, uh, world record for 2023 achieved 51.8 Celsius. That's the world's first 50 of 2023. Actually a little bit uh, late compared to average. Uh, this was the case in Iran over the last few days here. Uh, not an all-time record by any stretch for either Iran or that particular location. But certainly a, a hot one, that's for sure. But you would expect to see upper 40s, low 50s now at this time of the year in the Middle East. It has been fairly wet and cool in parts of the Middle East during the course of the spring season. I'm pretty much run out of time, unfortunately. Mind-boggling heat in central portions of, of, uh, of Europe uh, in recent days. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.
please subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more bye for now